Hey, I invite you to take a seat and to grab your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 28 is our text today. And if you're in the room and you don't have a Bible with you, that's okay. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 992 and you'll be able to follow along in the text. And as always, if you're here and you don't have a Bible and you want one, take one. We're serious. Take one of those Bibles with you. It is our gift to you. We want you to have the Word of God, read the Word of God, because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. And if you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, just let us know. Message us. Let the service hosts know, and we will get you a Bible. Uh, whether we have to mail it to you or deliver it across town, we'll get it to you because we want you to have God's life-changing Word in your life as well. Hey, uh, two things before uh, we dive into the text and start talking about it. First one is, uh, I want to say thank you to a lot of you who came who don't normally come on Saturday. So uh, it is appreciated because you're creating space for uh, people tomorrow morning. Uh, and so if you gave up your normal Sunday at 9.30 time, great job. As a, as a pastor, it is, uh, warms my heart to know that anybody listens to me. So uh, you guys have made my day. But uh, the, the other side of it is, uh, it, it, I know it's a sacrifice, but I hope you get used to it. I hope you like finish today and you go, this was good. Let's keep coming Saturday night. Perfect. Uh, so mission accomplished. No, the, uh, I really do appreciate that. The other thing that I wanna share is just, it's a crazy thought. And, uh, and yet, why not? I'm feeling a little bit crazy, so I just feel led by God to, to throw this out there. You got to see somebody declare their faith in Christ in baptism earlier in the service. And it's a beautiful thing. We love celebrating life change here at Calvary. We, we love when people declare unashamedly that Jesus is their Lord and Savior by being obedient to Him in baptism. And, and I just can't help but think in a room with this many people in it, those joining us online, that some of you are sitting there going, you know what? I, I believe in Jesus. I know he's my savior. I know my sins are forgiven. I've never been baptized. And right now the Spirit's like nudging you going, well, why not? And you're like, well, I didn't plan for it. And, he, and here's the challenge. Here's the gauntlet. If you're sitting there thinking, I should get baptized right now, then just get up and go out in the foyer and one of our pastors is out there waiting for you right now. And at the end of the service tonight, we'll baptize you. I mean, we'll just sit down at the end and then we'll just do it real quick and everybody will cheer and shout and it'll be great. And I know you're thinking, well, I don't have any clothes to change into. We don't care, okay? <laughs> we're, we're, we're just completely comfortable with that. We'll give you a new shirt, okay? So you can wear a different shirt. But, but look, it's have a suit. You're not gonna freeze to death on the way home. Okay, I mean, it's 88 degrees outside. I think you'll survive. So uh, look, we're all about helping you be obedient to Jesus. And so we just want to give you that opportunity. And if God moves you that way, uh, tell him. Now, if you're really kind of modest, like thinking, well, I don't want to do it like right now. Guess what? We do this three times tomorrow. We'd be glad to baptize you tomorrow. Just see one of us and we'll put you on. Because we've got baptisms planned at the 930 and 11 service here anyway. We can add you to that mix. We'd love to do that. Hey, so happy Easter. You know, that was, uh, that was predictable. You know, you say Happy Easter, uh, you guys would say it back. But what if I came out and said Merry Christmas? Yeah, see, some of you said Merry Christmas back. Some of you are like, Happy Easter, our pastor's going senile. Um, let's get him on the right holiday. Uh, some of you would, would just you would laugh because you think that's funny. Some of you would be annoyed by it. Like, oh, he thinks he's being funny. And some of you would just roll your eyes at me like my wife does when I try to be funny at home and she's like, that's not funny. Uh, and I, like, I think it is, so uh, we'll just do it. See, we respond to things differently. All of us, we, we, we hear the same thing, we experience the same thing, and we respond to it in different ways. Like, for instance, what is your response to a jury summons? You open the mailbox uh, Monday and you've been invited to participate in the criminal justice system. Are you like, yay, I get to help administer justice to this world. I get to do my civic duty. Or are you like, uh, how do I get out of this? <laughs> See, different responses. Or what about when you get that invitation to a wedding? Are you like, oh, I get to go celebrate life and love with some friends or relatives. Or are you like, Ugh, how do we get out of this? Do we have to go? Or what about when, you know, uh, someone invites you to go and attend an Arizona Cardinals football game? 
Is it like, I am so thankful for the opportunity to cheer on my team in person? Or is it, now I have to drive to Phoenix, pay for parking, buy $6 soft drinks, and be disappointed again? <laughs> See, we have different responses to almost everything, including the most incredible event in the history of the world, the resurrection of Jesus. Matthew 28, I want to read verses 1 through 15. Uh, and many of you may be familiar with this, but uh, we chose the Gospel of Matthew today because they, they kind of tell the story with a, a little bit different twist. So Matthew records the account that after Jesus was buried, and, and that was on Friday, Friday he suffered on the cross, he was buried in the tomb. Saturday, the religious leaders went to Pilate and they said, hey, uh, Jesus talked about being raised from the dead, and we think that his followers are going to perpetrate a hoax, and so uh, we want a guard to be placed on the tomb. It's at the end of Matthew 27. And so Pilate said, you can have the guard, go place them and do your best. And, and the, I'm sure the soldiers thought, this is stupid. We're trying to keep a dead guy from escaping a tomb. So anyway, let's pick up uh, at 28, chapter 28, verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for, the, and for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. I have, see, I have told you. So the ladies departed quickly from the tomb with great fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble." So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. So today I want to ask you, what is your response to the resurrection of Jesus? What is your response to the resurrection of Jesus? Now, maybe you believe in Jesus. Maybe you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world. Maybe you believe he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead. And maybe you've already made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life. Or maybe you're here and you've got some doubts. Maybe you're here and you're a skeptic. You're like, I just don't believe it. Maybe you're here and you're wondering, did Jesus actually rise from the dead? Well, we're going to look at these reactions to people who actually knew without a doubt, that the resurrection of Jesus was a reality. I mean, they all knew it. The players in the story knew it. Matthew, who recorded this, was one of them. He was one of the disciples, one of the apostles. And, and so he lists all the people who were aware of the absolute reality of the resurrection and recorded their different responses. First of all, you see the soldiers ignored the resurrection to protect their lives. The soldiers ignored the resurrection in order to protect their lives. I mean, their duty was to guard a tomb, and they failed. They failed. The occupant escaped. And here's the thing. Because they failed as Roman soldiers, they could be executed for dereliction of duty. It was that serious. And so they didn't know what to do, so they said, hey, let's go and uh, make a deal, because they didn't want to die. And the religious leaders said, hey, tell you what, pretend it never happened, nothing to see here. You just spread a false report, and it's all good. You know, self-preservation is a powerful instinct and motivator. And so 
understand that for the soldiers, if they embraced the reality of the resurrection, they would lose their job, they would lose the money that they were being paid, they would lose their freedom, and probably their lives. I mean, they'd be kicked out of the legion if they weren't even, you know, executed for, their, for the dereliction of duty, and uh, they'd be living in the midst of foreigners who hated them. And so the uh, soldiers ignored the resurrection and stayed alive. And then you have the religious leaders who rejected the resurrection to preserve their lifestyle. Now, these are the ones that are really interesting because these were the chief priests. They were the highest ranking religious leaders in Israel. Think Pope, five centuries before the Pope was around. I mean, these were the guys that had, were actually physically descended from Aaron, the first high priest. We're talking about Aaron who was part of the Moses, Exodus kind of event thing. You know, Charlton Heston, <laughs> Ten Commandments movie. Uh, trying to give you a point of reference. And, and so, uh, you know, th this, these guys are it. They're the leaders spiritually of the entire nation of Israel. They're the highest ranking influencers. They've got the power. They've got the prestige. They've got the money. Uh, they are connected and, uh, and they know that Jesus is the Messiah. Now think about it. These are the guys who had heard about Jesus. They'd heard about the miracles. They'd heard him teach. They questioned him. They finally arrested him. They uh, railroaded him and had him set up so that he could be executed. And the reason they executed him was because he claimed to be the Messiah, the Son of God. They considered that blasphemy. And now, on Easter morning, they discover that all of it is true. I mean, can you imagine? The soldiers show up and tell them. An angel showed up, rolled the stone away. Jesus is gone. He's alive. And these guys in that moment, come face to face with reality that the Messiah is in their midst. The Son of God is in their midst. I mean, this is what they, the whole nation has been waiting for, been praying for, been, been uh, you know, anxious for, and it happened on their watch. The miracle of all time. And their response was to pay hush money to the witnesses. Why would they do that? I mean, doesn't that seem insane to you? I mean, kind of like discovering the cure for cancer and then, you know, paying someone to not, not tell anyone. Like, this is the greatest news ever, and, and they cover it up. Why would they do that? Because they were men of power, wealth, and prestige. And to acknowledge Jesus as Lord would change all of that. I mean, they would have to admit they were wrong. They would have to admit that their theology was wrong. See, they were part of a group called the Sadducees, and they believed in the first five books of the Old Testament, what we call the Pentateuch. And that was it. That was the only authority they had, and the Pentateuch didn't talk about the resurrection from the dead. So the Sadducees didn't believe in eternal life. They didn't believe in the resurrection from the dead. They would have to admit, hey, our theology was wrong. And they would have to admit that their practice was wrong. Do you, do you know the story that, that Holy Week, you know, right after the triumphal entry, Jesus, you know, drove the money changers out of the temple, turned over the tables, all, all that kind of stuff? Jesus made a mess of the temple because what was happening were the chief priests were profiting off of worshipers. See, you had to travel to Jerusalem. You had to make sacrifices. You had to pay temple taxes. Well, the money changers were like, ah, oh, yeah, your money's no good here. You got to have, you know, Jewish money. And then they would exchange money at a profit for the temple. And then people would come and they would bring their sacrificial animal. And of course, it wasn't good enough for the people at the temple. You had to sell yours to them and, and buy, uh, you know, a better animal at an inflated price. Sounds like gasoline. Anyway, so, uh, anyway, they, you know, they were profiting off of people who were coming to worship, G or worship God and, and, and they would have to admit they were wrong. And then they had just perpetrated an incredible act of injustice. Because Jesus told them the truth about who he was and they had him condemned to die for it and then railroaded him and manipulated it so he was actually executed by the Romans. They would have to admit they were wrong. And they would have to give up all their power, all their prestige, all their income and admit they were wrong. Did I mention that they were all men? <laughs> I, that may have played into it. But in any case... They rejected the resurrection. 
And, and reading that and looking at that and thinking about that, it makes me think of Jesus' words, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? Because that's what they did. They knew the resurrection was true and they rejected it just to preserve their lifestyle. And then, of course, in the story, we see that the disciples rejoiced in the resurrection and it changed their lives. They rejoiced. Now, honestly, it took them a moment to get to the rejoicing because the women were afraid and then they had joy. And the disciples, if you read the other texts, they doubted and then they had faith. But we know from history this is true. The disciples saw Jesus die. They watched as he was buried. They found an empty tomb and then every one of them encountered the resurrected Jesus. They knew that Jesus was alive. And because of this reality, our world is different today. That handful of followers started a movement that is still expanding and changing lives today. In fact, you just witnessed somebody declare that Jesus had changed their life in the waters of baptism a few minutes ago. This is still going on, this is still happening. Started from those 12 men, one of who committed suicide and the other 11 abandoned their Lord. And here's how significant, significant it was. A little over a month later, after Jesus' crucifixion, these same men who ran away, who denied knowing Jesus, who hid, who were afraid, are in that same temple courts preaching the name of Jesus. They're, they're sharing the gospel with thousands of people and thousands of people are responding and they're doing it without fear. See, God had changed their lives because of the reality of the resurrection. And every one of those apostles served and sacrificed to tell people about the Savior who is Jesus Christ. Now, in fact, if you're a, a skeptic, if you're doubting you know, about the resurrection, if it's real, uh, I, I just want to share with you what Chuck Colson had to say. Now, uh, how many of you know what Watergate is? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, go home and Google it, okay? It's kind of a big deal, you know, the, the crime of the, you know, the century, uh, supposedly, that, that caused a, an American president to resign office, mid-office. So Chuck Colson was involved in that, and went to prison for that, and became a follower of Jesus because of that. And this is what he said. Chuck Colson said, I know the resurrection of Jesus is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified that they had seen Jesus raised from the dead, and then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Every one of them was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they couldn't keep a lie for three weeks. <laughs> You're telling me 12 apostles could keep a lie for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. You see, we want you to be convinced that Jesus is alive, that the resurrection was real, and that Jesus can change your life. Now, if you're still wondering, if you're still doubting, if you still have questions, if you're still struggling with this, we would love to continue the conversation. We'd love to invite you to continue attending Calvary because uh, we want to keep teaching you about Jesus. And we did, I'd invite you to, to come and take the Next Step classes next week, next Sunday. Uh, every one of them will help answer some of those questions. And, and I'll just make this offer. If you've got questions, any one of our pastors would be happy to buy you lunch and talk about your questions. I'm just, I, I throw that out there and some of you are like, really? Really? Because we want to help you find a personal life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're all about. So if you're interested in a conversation, grab one of those, you know, red connect cards and write on there, I want to, <laughs> I want the pastor to buy me lunch. And we'll call you up and we'll set it up. If you've got questions, we want to help you find the truth. So, now, if you believe the resurrection is true. Oh wait, do you guys believe the resurrection is true? Yes. All right then. So what is your response to the resurrection? Because if you know Jesus is alive and yet your life isn't changing, then you're responding like the soldiers. You're basically ignoring the reality of the resurrection. See, here at Calvary, we want to lead people to a life changing relationship with Jesus. 
if Jesus is alive and the resurrection is true, and the moment you confess Jesus is Lord, God the Holy Spirit enters your life, then if you follow Jesus, then he's going to change who you are. See, to acknowledge Jesus and not have any life change is just to be religious. And Jesus isn't in favor of religion, and neither are we. So if you believe the resurrection is true and nothing's happening different in your life, then maybe you're responding like the soldiers. And if you know Jesus was raised from the dead and you really don't want to embrace it because you like your position or your power or your prestige or your money and you're afraid that following Jesus is going to cost you some of that, then you're responding like the religious leaders. You're deciding that the life you have is better than the life that God can give you. You're deciding that it's better to hang on to what is yours rather than to trust God for what is his that he can bless you with. And if that's the case, I just want to challenge you to just know that everything is worth losing for Jesus. Everything is worth losing for Jesus because he forgives your sins, he changes your life, he gives you hope, he promises heaven. It's all worth it. So if you find yourself kind of going, yeah, I, I believe this, but I don't want to give up what I have, can I just encourage you to, to repent and, and to surrender fully to Jesus and let him change your life? But if you believe that Jesus died for your sins and was raised from the dead, then respond like the disciples and rejoice. Rejoice. Because Jesus' death and resurrection changes everything. When you surrender to Jesus, your sins are forgiven. God the Holy Spirit indwells you, and he promises to never leave you or forsake you. You experience peace beyond explanation. God provides miraculously, heals incredibly, and brings about reconciliation that is unimaginable. And, by the way, I already mentioned this, your eternal destiny is changed from hell to heaven. That's cause to rejoice. By the way, that's, at Calvary, that's why at Calvary, one of our core values is contagious celebration. You may have noticed that. We like to clap, cheer, yell, and celebrate. See, for us, officially, as a church, we believe Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We believe that he was raised from the dead, and, and that's why we proclaim him Lord. That's why we celebrate. That's why we serve. That's why we invite. That's why we plead with you to follow Jesus. See, that's our response to the resurrection. What is your response to the resurrection of Jesus? Now, in just a moment, we're gonna pray and we're gonna keep worshiping. Uh, but if you're wanting to know more about following Jesus, again, I already shared with you, you know, fill out a Connect card. We seriously will call you, talk to you, uh, set up a time to meet with you. We want you to know Jesus, wanna talk about Jesus. Uh, if you need to talk with someone like right now, after the service, our prayer team is gonna be right here at the front and they would love to pray with you, talk with you, share with you how Jesus changed their life and how he can change your life. Uh, pastors are all out in the four years and we would be glad to talk with you. Just say, hey, you got a minute? We wanna talk about Jesus. And, and if you're struggling, you're like, hey, I believe, but I'm really trapped in my own self-destructive habits and urges and addictions, then uh, we got help for you. Monday night, 6.30 is a program called Celebrate Recovery, meets right here in this room. We would love to invite you. In fact, I'm gonna personally invite you because I'm the guest teacher Monday night, 6.30. I'm gonna be leading Celebrate Recovery. I would love for you to come and check it out. Nobody will think you're weird because we already know you are, okay? <laughs> like, nobody think you're messed up because we already know you. We're all messed up. We're all in that place. And that's why Jesus offers hope because we want you to know Jesus because Jesus will change your life. Will you pray with me? Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us life in your son. We thank you for pursuing us all the way from heaven. So God, we just wanna tell you that, that we love you too. And we know that our sins are forgiven because of Jesus shed blood. We know that we have eternal life because Jesus was raised from the dead. But we also know that we don't always live for you the way that we want. We know we don't live for you the way you want. So God, change our lives for those who have never confessed you as Lord, I pray that right now, God, you'd reveal yourself to them and they would take that step into newness of life. Father, for those that know you as Savior but aren't following you right now, I pray that you'd meet them with a spirit of conviction 
and show them how you can change their life. And, and Lord, I pray you'd give them the courage to surrender to you in a fresh way. And God, for those that are seeking you, I pray that they would find you with joy and anticipation of all the goodness that you have for us because you are our Savior. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.